Hello everyone, myself Dr. Parth Goswami and let's discuss about the mediators of acute inflammation. It could be cell derived or plasma derived mediator. This particular topic comes under the competency number PA 4.2. It include narrate and describe the mediators of acute inflammation. So our learning objective is that first of all we will understand the definition of mediators. Then we will discuss the types of inflammatory mediator. And then I will teach you in detail about individual cell derived and the plasma derived mediator. So first of all definition, what is the meaning of inflammatory mediators? So the name itself suggests they will mediate the inflammation, right? So they are the substance that initiate and regulate the inflammatory reaction. You know, many mediators have been identified and they are targeted therapeutically to limit the inflammation. For example, if I am talking about asthma condition, allergic condition, then in that condition, you know, leukotrienes are increased. That is one of the inflammatory mediator. So you can give the drug that will inhibit the leukotriene synthesis, like that of Montelukas or Zafirlukas, right? That's why they are using allergic inflammation. So that is the that is its therapeutic use, right? So it's very important topic. So inflammatory mediator means substance that initiate and regulate the inflammatory reaction. So which are the type of inflammatory mediators? So there are two types of inflammatory mediator. One is cell derived inflammatory mediator and second one is plasma derived mediator. Obviously plasma is synthesized from the liver. That's why I have drawn the liver diagram here with, right? Cell derived inflammatory mediator again can be divided into two types. Either it could be preform. Preform means they are present in the granules, right? They are preformed. They doesn't need to be synthesized during the inflammation. They will ready to release whenever there is any form of injurious stimuli. But some inflammatory cell derived mediators are newly synthesized, right? They are not preformed. So cell derived mediator can be divided again into two categories, right? All right. So let's uh, see the examples of cell and plasma derived mediator. First of all, cell derived inflammatory mediators, which is preformed, right? First, we will discuss about the preformed cell derived inflammatory mediator, which are ready to release whenever there is any injurious stimuli, right? First one is histamine, most important. Second one is serotonin. Third one is lysosomal enzymes. Fourth one is gelatinase and fifth one is acid hydrolase. These five are the main preformed cell derived inflammatory mediators. Now cell derived inflammatory mediator, which is newly synthesized during the inflammation, during the acute inflammation, you know, they will newly synthesize. So that is the nitric oxide, Arachidonic acid metabolite like that of prostaglandins, leukotriene, right? These are the most important prostaglandins and the leukotrienes. Platelet activating factor and cytokines. These are the newly synthesized cell derived inflammatory mediator. Now plasma derived inflammatory mediator. Now remember one point that plasma derived mediators are present in the plasma in an inactivated form. During the inflammation, they need to be activated to mediate their action, right? So plasma derived mediators are three. Most one is most important is complement system. Second one is kinin system. And the third one is coagulation system, particularly thrombin, right? Now, you know, in our previous lecture, we have discussed various, uh, you know, events in the inflammation, acute inflammation. We have discussed uh, something about vascular change that include vasodilatation, you know, increased vascular permeability, you know, stasis of blood, then, you know, sometime in severe inflammation, bronchoconstriction also will occur. Then, you know, leukocyte movement towards the site of injury. So all these events in the acute inflammation is mediated by inflammatory mediator. They are the mediators. Without these mediators, you know, all these events cannot occur, right? So the inflammatory mediators are the main substance that will lead to all the events of acute inflammation. Now, different mediator having the different action. So we will discuss each mediator in the detail one by one right all right so first we will begin with histamine now why the name histamine is given because you know this particular inflammatory mediator will get formed from amino acid name is histidine right it formed from the histidine that's why the name histamine is given now which are the source of histamine production? Histamine is one of the example of, as we have seen, it is one of the example of preformed cell derived inflammatory mediator. They are ready to release whenever there is inflammation. 
so what is the source of his production right preform but where they produce so the most important source is mast cell they are present in the mast cell granule that is the most important source second one is basophil and another another one is platelet right now what is the action of histamine it mediate which event in the inflammation so it will lead to increase vascular permeability right it will lead to vasodilatation and it will lead to bronchoconstriction right bronchoconstriction so obviously because of vasodilatation there will be redness and a warm feeling in the inflamed side and because of increased vascular permeability there will be exudation of fluid around the tissue and so there will be swelling so most of the sign of acute inflammation is due to the histamine right all right now serotonin serotonin is having similar action to that of histamine it act similarly like that of histamine and it is also preform cell derived mediator the main source of production is different is the platelet right main source is platelet and it is also present in enterochromaffin cells of our body right all right and you know it is one of the neurotransmitter in the gastrointestinal tract right all right now lysosomal enzyme one of the cell derived inflammatory mediator so the name itself suggests these particular enzymes present in the lysosome organelle and the lysosome mainly present in neutrophil and macrophage these two are the powerful phagocytic cell right the main function of lysosomal enzyme is intracellular intracellular killing of micro particularly bacteria and tissue debris right so they are having the role during the phagocytosis right the neutrophil and macrophage whenever do the phagocytosis of foreign particle the lysosome will bind with phagocytic vacuum they will form the phagolysosome and then they will do the intracellular killing of micro now gelatinase and acid hydrolase they are present in tertiary granule of neutrophil right they are present in tertiary granules and they are also having role in micro killing right they are also having role in micro killing right now nitric oxide so you know nitric oxide is also known by the name endothelial derived relaxing factor right now what is the source of production of nitric oxide so they will produce from l arginine amino acid and they will produce from l arginine in presence of oxygen and nadph right with the help of enzyme nitric oxide synthetase so this nitric oxide synthetase will convert will convert the l arginine into nitric oxide right the main action of nitric oxide is they will do vasodilatation right that's why it is known by the name endothelial derived relaxing factor right all right you know they will decrease the leukocyte recruitment to the site of inflammation right they will decrease the leukocyte recruitment you know they will inhibit the platelet aggregation platelet adhesion aggregation and secretion all platelet activity will be inhibited by nitric oxide right and it's having microbicidal activity as well they will kill the microbe as well by the formation of powerful free radical the name is peroxynitrite by formation of peroxynitrite you know they will kill the intracellular bacteria microbes so their their main function is anti inflammatory action vasodilatation and to kill the intracellular micro right guys they are the most important one right they are newly synthesized 
inflammatory mediator during the inflammation right during inflammation they will newly synthesize the classical example is prostaglandins and leukotrienes right they are the most important inflammatory mediator why why i am telling that it's the most important because as we have discussed you know the main hallmark of acute inflammation is increased vascular permeability and most of the arachidonic acid metabolites will lead to increased vascular permeability that's why it's some they are the most important mediator mediating the events of acute inflammation particularly increased vascular permeability right all right now these arachidonic acid metabolites are mainly derived from you know dietary source or from the amino acid linoleic acid right so they can derive from that too now how the arachidonic acid metabolites produce so this is a very beautiful diagram given in the book of robins right i always prefer to use the robins book of pathology it's a gold gold golden book for the pathology right for understanding pathology it's a very good conceptual book all right so see in our cell membrane there is a presence of phospholipid right so from the phospholipid arachidonic acid, acid metabolites will form in the presence of phospholipase this phospholipase will convert the phospholipid into arachidonic acid now let's see how the metabolites of arachidonic acid form so in presence of cyclooxygenase enzyme the arachidonic acid will get converted into prostaglandin g2 from which there will be production of prostaglandin h2 and now this prostaglandin h2 can be converted into three uh, three metabolite one is prostaglandin i2 another one is thromboxane a2 or it can get converted into prostaglandin d2 or e2 right now what is the action so this prostaglandin i2 as you can see in this diagram you know they will this will lead mainly lead to vasodilatation it will lead to dilatation of the blood vessel and it will inhibit the platelet aggregation so this particular prostaglandin i2 is having anti inflammatory action right anti inflammation while thromboxane a2 will lead to exactly opposite to the action of pgi2 right see thromboxane a2 mainly will lead to vasoconstriction and they will promote the platelet aggregation so its action is exactly reverse to that of pgi2 so it's a inflammation inducing substance right it's not anti inflammatory right so thromboxane a2 will lead to vasoconstriction and promote the platelet aggregation right all right now prostaglandin d2 and e2 these particular prostaglandins will mainly lead to vasodilatation and it will lead to increase vascular permeability right and it will lead to leukocyte chemotaxis as well so increase vascular permeability is mainly due to prostaglandin d2 and e2 so it is so among all the prostaglandins you know d2 and e2 is the main one that lead to increase vascular permeability right all right now let's talk on the other aspect if in our body there is a presence of lipooxygenase so in presence of five lipooxygenase arachidonic acid metabolite can get converted into five hydroperoxy eicosatetraenoic acid which will further get converted into hydro eicosatetraenoic acid right and which is a very powerful chemotaxis substance all right now this hpet can get converted into leukotriene a4 which will further differentiate into c4 d4 and e4 now this leukotriene a4 can get converted into leukotriene b4 which is a very powerful chemotactic agent for the neutrophil right it will lead to chemotaxis of neutrophil leukotriene b4 all right now these three leukotriene c4 d4 and the e4 these all three will lead to increased vascular permeability and the bronchospasm right and that's why they are having mainly role in allergic reaction particularly in the asthma in the asthma patients leukotriene will be increased they will lead to increased vascular permeability so there will be extreme inflammation and it will lead to bronchoconstriction our bronchial muscles will get constricted so the patient will have breathlessness right and that's why in the treatment of asthma you know leukotriene inhibitors are used like that of uh, you know montelukast and safilukast all right now in presence of 12 lipooxygenase you know this hydroperoxy eicosatetraenoic acid 
can get converted into lipoxin A4 and B4, not leukotriene. They will get converted into lipoxins A4 and B4, and which will lead to neutrophil adhesions and chemotaxis. So we can say it will inhibit the inflammation, right? Anti-inflammatory. So this is the interesting various mechanism of various actions of arachidonic acid metabolites, right? Now, what is the clinical interpretation of understanding these uh, arachidonic acid metabolites? So, one interpretation is in asthma. Now, second interpretation is that suppose the patient is having fever, suppose patient is having pain, you know, if patient is having sign of inflammation, then cyclooxygenase inhibitor can be given like that of aspirin, paracetamol, indomethacin, like, right? So, all they will lead to suppression of inflammation, COX inhibitor. Now, suppose the inflammation is very much severe. Suppose the patient is having status asthmaticus, right, which is a very severe degree of inflammation. So, if the inflammation is very severe and you want to suppress the inflammation immediately, then you can give the steroid drug. The steroid will inhibit the phospholipase and the phospholipase is a main enzyme that will lead to production of arachidonic acid, right? So, you can give steroid if you want to subside the inflammation immediately, you know, these, uh, these prostaglandins, you know, leukotrienes all will not form if you give the steroid because steroid inhibit the main key enzyme that is responsible for production of arachidonic acid. It will inhibit the phospholipase, right? So, understand? See, so kindly remember that in presence of phospholipase, phospholipid will get converted into arachidonic acid and in presence of cyclooxygenase, there will be production of different prostaglandins and thromboxane A2. And in presence of lipooxygenase, there will be production of leukotrienes and lipoxine. All right. Now let's discuss about the platelet activating factor. So platelet activating factor, you know, the source of production is many inflammatory cells, mast cell you know, basophil, you know, they can be produced from platelet as well, neutrophil, or the source could be macrophage as well, right? So, these are the different cells from which PAF can be produced. Now, what is the action of platelet activating factor? So, it's having very interesting action. In a low concentration, you know, it will lead to vasodilatation, and increase vascular permeability, right? But suppose the platelet activating factor concentration is high, then it will lead to vasoconstriction, not vasodilatation. And it will lead to bronchoconstriction as well, bronchoconstriction, right? and platelet aggregation aggregation so these are the action of platelet activating factor now cytokines so uh, you know there will be two type of cytokine production one is in the acute inflammation and another one is in the chronic inflammation we will not discuss about the chronic inflammation in today's lecture so various cytokine example of cytokines is tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 1, interleukin 6, chemokines and interleukin 17. These uh, five are the main cytokines and among these five, the most important cytokine which mediate the inflammatory reaction is interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, right? All right. Now, what is the principal source of its production? So, tumor necrosis factor will produce from macrophage, mast cell and T lymphocyte while IL-1 produced from macrophage, endothelial cell and some of the epithelial cell. IL-6 mainly produced from macrophage only. Chemokines mainly produced from macrophage, endothelial cell, T lymphocyte and the mast cell. While the interleukin-17 mainly produced from T lymphocyte, right? Now, which are the principal actions of all these cytokines? So, IL-1 and tumor necrosis factor, both are mainly pyrogenic, right? They will lead to fever and many systemic effect of inflammation, which we will see later on in the slide. The interleukin-6 is having mainly function of acute phase reactant. You know, during, during the inflammation, there will be release of acute phase proteins. So that will be mediated by IL-6. It will lead to release of serum amyloid associated protein, SAA as well, right? So it will mediate the release of acute phase reactant. 
concentration of which is increased during the inflammation obviously chemokine is having the function of doing chemotaxis right chemokines is having the role in the chemotaxis of the neutrophil and monocyte towards the site of injury right interleukin 17 will lead to recruitment of mainly neutrophil all right now among all these cytokines you know this is a diagram given in the robbins book so you know this interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha cytokine will lead to local inflammation systemic effects and some systemic pathological effects so you know this particular cytokines il1 and tnf alpha tumor necrosis factor alpha will lead to increase expression of adhesion molecule particularly it will lead to expression of p and e selectin right and it will increases the pro coagulant activity because of endothelial injury so patient can have chance of thrombus formation right if this interleukin 1 and tnf alpha produce excessively right that is a cytokine storm which is seen in covid right so excessive inflammation also not good this two will lead to increase expression of adhesion molecule as well as formation of thrombus right this il1 and tnf can lead to leukocyte activation right leukocyte can be activated all right in the brain you know it will lead to fever by release of pyro release of pyrogens you know they will lead to fever il6 particularly interleukin 6 will lead to release of acute phase protein it will stimulate the liver for the production of acute phase reactant in case of an inflammation so in the inflammation you can estimate this acute phase reactant to check the severity of inflammation for example serum amyloid associated protein you know crp all will be increased they are the acute phase protein they can be increased in case of an inflammation right all right leukocyte production from the bone marrow is also mediated by il1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha cardiac output can be affected by these two and these two can lead to insulin resistance as well because of which patient can develop diabetes right now let's talk about the complement system which is one of the most important plasma derived inflammatory mediator right see, see this complement system is usually present in a inactivated form right they need to be activated in the plasma to mediate their function they are the inactivated form in the plasma and they need to be activated to mediate their function right all right and the key event in the activation of the complement is c3 cleavage right basically there are nine complement components c1 to c9 there are nine complement system component each component need to be activated to mediate their action right the main event however the main event is cleavage of c3 which will produce c3b right all right now basically there are three pathway of complement system activation one is classical pathway second one is alternate pathway and third one is menos binding lactin pathway now the mode of activation of each of this pathway is different in the classical pathway whenever there is a microbe in the body they will have the antigenic component right against which antibody is formed so this antigen and antibody will combine with each other and they will form a immune complex over which c1 will bind right and because of binding of c1 the classical pathway of complement activation will start right so during this process first of all c4 and c2 are getting activated and they will form c4b and c2a this is known by the name c3 convertase right c3 convertase of classical pathway and this c3 convertase will cleave the c3 to form c3b right they will cleave the complement number 3 right so that is about the classical pathway in the alternate pathway it is activated by directly microbe over the microbe there is a presence of you know lipopolysaccharide you know complex polysaccharide you know all these are present over microbe so all that substance over the microbe will directly activate the complement number three they doesn't need complement number four and complement two activation they will directly lead to activation of complement number three in presence of factor number b and d right they will form c3 b and capital b b this is the c3 convertase in alternate pathway right and this c3 convertase again will cleave the c3 b so ultimately complement number three is going to be cleaved and they will form c3 b however 
the mode of activation is different classical pathway the antibody presence is needed while in the alternate pathway you know it will directly activate c3 without need of antibody production they will activated by lipopolysaccharide polysaccharide present over the micro right by cobra venom so in this way alternate pathway is activated but ultimately there will be formation of c3b right and in the mannose binding lactin pathway you know the lactin is present in our plasma you know which will bind to the antigenic component of the microbe and they will lead to you know complement activation you know they will buy this uh, lactin will bind to the carbohydrate present over the microbe and in this way they will initiate a complement activation so once this c3b is produced once this c3b is produced you know now it will activate complement number 5 to 9 and this is known by the name membrane attack complex right so these are the function of complement system once this membrane attack complex is formed the name itself suggest it will attack over the membrane it will kill the bacterial cell membrane and it will lie it will lead to lysis of micro right so membrane attack complex will do the killing of bacteria by damage to the cell membrane right if the membrane is damaged then all content from the cell or bacteria is released and it will kill right all right see during during this particular process of c5 to c9 activation there will be by product production the by product can be produced particularly c3a and c5a both these act as a anaphyle toxin right anaphyle toxin and this sorry anaphyle toxin and this anaphyle toxin you know will lead to recruitment of the leukocyte and the activation of leukocyte right they will mediate the inflammation they will lead to chemotaxis as well you know they will mediate the inflammation as well as they will lead to chemotaxis of neutrophil towards the site of injury so if you remember my previous lecture then i told that you know the chemotaxis is mediated by c3a and c5a as well so the c3 and c5 a will lead to chemotaxis of leukocyte towards the site of injury chemotaxis means unidirectional movement of leukocyte towards the site of injury here the c3b product is formed this c3b can act as a opsonin opsonin means substance that cover the microbe to facilitate the phagocytosis right it will cover the microbe you know it will cover the microbe the opsonin will cover the microbe and so you know it will it will facilitate the phagocytosis process it will help in phagocytosis of bacteria in that way bacteria can be killed by the process of phagocytosis so basically there are four main function of complement system which are the four main function the first one is anaphyle toxin c3a c5a act as anaphyle toxin which mediate the inflammation c3 and c5a act as a chemotactic substance they will lead to chemotaxis of neutrophil towards the site of injury form c3b will act as a opsonin it will coat the bacteria and so it will help in phagocytosis process so it will kill the microbe by the process of phagocytosis you know this c5 to c9 activation will form a membrane attack complex right and it will lead to damage to the membrane of the bacteria and will lead to lysis of microbe in that manner right so these are the main function of complement system now let's see how the complement system is regulated so you know there are certain regulators of complement system once the complement activated they need to be controlled if they doesn't get control then they can lead to damage to our normal cell as well right they can lead to hypersensitivity reaction if not controlled so the control is by c1q inhibitors the first regulator is c1q inhibitor right which will inhibit the c1 binding to immune complex to antigen antibody complex you know the classical pathway is activated by antigen antibody complex the complement number 1 will bind to it and so the system is activated so c1q inhibitor will inhibit this c1 binding to the antigen antibody complex right they will inhibit all right second regulator is cd55 which is also known by the name dk accelerating factor right they will inhibit the production of c3 convertase right so if c3 convertase is not formed then complement number 3 will not cleave and so the further complement activation will not occur right so they are the, so this is also the regulator of complement system cd55 the another one is cd59 which is also known by the name membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis right this cd59 will inhibit 
द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ मेम्ब्रेन अटैक कॉम्प्लेक्स राइट and if membrane attack complex is not formed the bacteria will not kill by damage to the cell membrane right all right another one is factor h factor i and cd46 they will inhibit alternate pathway of complement activation right they will inhibit alternate pathway so these are the regulators of complement system suppose this regulator are not not working properly then you know Uh, the complement can damage our normal tissue as well one of such condition is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea in which cd55 and 59 not working properly and you know if they doesn't work then rbc will be lysed by complement you know because the complement will not get regulated all right now coagulation system of inflammatory mediator it is also one of the inflammatory mediator now it's very interesting that you know coagulation system is interlink with you know it's interlink with inflammation right the inflammation and the coagulation system are interlinked to each other i will show you how so first of all because of coagulation system activation you know because of production of you know because of production of uh, factor number 12 factor number 12a which is known by the name hagman factor you know it will activate a four system it will activate a four powerful system the first one factor number 12a first one it will lead to activation of alternate pathway of complement right it will activate alternate pathway of complement okay second one it will it will lead to activation of fibrinolytic system fibrinolytic system how so you know factor number 12a hagman factor will convert plasminogen to plasmin and this plasmin can activate complement system right it can activate complement system and you know uh, this plasmin can degrade the fibrin into fibrin degraded products and which will increases the vascular permeability during the inflammation all right the third system that can be activated is coagulation system coagulation system you know it will lead to production of thrombin if the coagulation system is activated you know intrinsic pathway then ultimately thrombin will form which will degrade the fibrin into fibrin degraded product and the fourth system that can be activated by factor number 12a is a kinin system right in which the factor number 12a will lead to conversion of precalicrin into calicrine and this calicrine will lead to conversion of high molecular weight kininogen into bradykinin so now you can imagine that you know if the coagulation system is activated you know it will lead to complement system activation which will lead to inflammation and you know if the inflammation is activated you know because of inflammation activated endothelial can get injured and the coagulation system can be activated you know coagulation system can be activated by endothelial injury so during inflammation endothelial can get damaged and the coagulation system is activated and once the coagulation system activated they can activate this four system which which can lead to inflammation by act acting as a inflammatory mediator understand so inflammation and coagulation system are interlinked with each other so you know by the coagulation system activation factor 12a activation there will be activation of four system complement activation fibrinolytic system activation coagulation system activation and the kinin system activation so in this way kinin system is also activated which will form bradykinin now let's understand about the kinin system what is the function of bradykinin so once this bradykinin is formed you know in the kinin system mainly there will be production of bradykinin 
this bradykinin is a very powerful inflammatory mediator lead to pain during the inflammation the pain is mainly because of bradykinin however it can lead to vasodilatation and increase vascular permeability event of acute inflammation right so in that way bradykinin will lead to pain vasodilatation and increase vascular permeability okay now you know chemokines i forgot to mention about the chemokines that is one of the cell mediated you know cell derived inflammatory mediator the name itself suggests you know chemokines will lead to function of chemotaxis it will lead to chemotaxis of inflammatory cell toward the site of injury right uh, as we have discussed in our first lecture that chemotaxis could be due to you know c3a c5a leukotriene b4 interleukin 8 or because of chemokines so the chemokines will lead to chemotaxis as well it is one of the chemo attractant agent the chemokines is divided into four category or we can say four type based on the presence of cysteine residue right based on the conservative cysteine residue arrangement so you know the first chemokine is alpha chemokines in the alpha chemokines there is a two cysteine two conserved cysteine residue right two conserved cysteine residue and in between it there is a presence of amino acid one amino acid so the name given is cxc it is a alpha chemokines the examples are interleukin 1 Tumor necrosis factor and interleukin eight. You know they will lead mainly lead to chemotaxis of neutrophil, right? Now you know second category is second category of chemokine is beta chemokine. Now here there is a presence of only two cysteine residue, right? There is a no amino acid in between, so that is the beta chemokines. the examples are monocyte chemo attractant protein protein 1 which will lead to chemotaxis of monocyte right another one is antas that is a regulated and normal t cell expression and secretion right it will lead to chemotaxis of t lymphocyte toward the site of injury right mcp1 monocyte chemo attractant protein will lead to chemotaxis chemotaxis of monocyte toward the site of injury and another one is eotaxin which will lead to chemotaxis of eosinophil right so beta chemokines will lead to chemotaxis of most of the inflammatory cell but not neutrophil neutrophil chemotaxis mediated by alpha chemokines all right all right now third category is gamma chemokines here there is a presence of only one cysteine conserved one conserved cysteine residue right there is no amino acid no two cysteine residue only one cysteine residue is present and it is known by the name gamma chemokines the example is lymphotactin right which will lead to chemotaxis of lymphocytes understand and the fourth category of chemokines is cx3c in which there is a presence of two cysteine conserved residues and in between there is a presence of three amino acid in between the two conserved cysteine residue there is a presence of three amino acids the example of cx3c chemokine is fract alkaline most important mcq it will lead to chemotaxis of monocyte and the t cells mainly right all right so that was all about the chemokines right now let's discuss the mcqs So the first MCQ is that 34 year male got the sunburn induced damage to the skin which mechanism responsible for the late sunburn damage in the acute inflammation so here this male is dealing with acute inflammation and that is by the sunburn and you know the sunburn is one of the thermal injury so here the individual dealing with thermal injury right and here the question asked that which mechanism responsible for this late sunburn damage so leukocyte induced damage intercellular channel formation delayed prolonged leakage or delayed transient change 
so in the thermal injury as we have discussed you know there will be increased vascular permeability because of thermal injury increased vascular permeability and the response will be delayed one and it will remain which will remain for prolonged duration right so delay prolonged leakage is the mechanism for increased vascular permeability in thermal in thermal injury right so the answer is delayed prolonged leakage right if you can't remember this then see my first lecture in which i have discussed about the various mechanism of increase vascular permeability all right so answer is delayed prolonged leakage all right now 34 year female got a knife injury over the forearm right during the cooking she was having redness in that area with tremendous pain which cytokine responsible for the pain so here examiner want to ask that pain is because of which cytokine you know she got the inflammation over the arm because of uh, knife injury so the pain is because of which cytokine nitric oxide platelet activating factor lipoxine or bradykinin see the ano and the lipoxine are the anti inflammatory action platelet activating factor doesn't lead to much pain the pain is mainly because of bradykinin so the answer is bradykinin all right 34 year male developed infection over the buttock within 3 days inflammation subsided which complement component responsible for the leukocyte movement toward the side toward the infected buttock area so see here the examiner want to ask that which complement system responsible for the movement of leukocyte toward the site of injury right toward the site of injury or we can say infection right so they want to ask that why chemotaxis occurred in this particular male so leukocyte chemotaxis is mainly mediated by chemotactic agent right so here simply you have to identify which is the chemotactic agent responsible for the leukocyte movement toward the site of injury c5a c3b c59 or c2b so obviously c5a is a one of the chemo attractant substance right it can lead to chemotaxis or like 23 year male develop acute appendicitis his ferritin and saa increase much which cytokine responsible for its elevation understand here the patient is having acute infection ferritin and serum amyloid associated protein increase they are the acute phase reactant right in the acute inflammation the acute phase reactant can be increased and they are increased because of interleukin 6 cytokine interleukin 1 6 bradykinin or tnf alpha see il1 and tnf alpha mainly lead to fever and the systemic inflammation right bradykinin lead to pain acute phase reactant mainly increase because of interleukin 6 all right so that was all about the mediators of inflammation hope you have enjoyed this particular video i will be right back with a new video till then take care and bye bye